Star Mod is like, and welcome to Fair and Unbiased for episode 5 of Shadowhunter season 3, Stronger Than Heaven. I've decided that I'm going to po post Fair and Unbiased on Mondays because not only does it give me more time to record and upload, it also, I think it also adds a good deal of anticipation to have my analysis uploaded the day before the new episode comes out. So from now on, Fair and Unbiased will come out on the Monday before the new episode and First Thoughts will come out on the day the episode, well, the day after the episode airs for me. No, it'll be the day after the episode airs for anyone in America. It'll be the day that I actually get to see it in like the UK, Europe, etc. Uh, the reason that this video is so candid looking, the reason I'm not in my usual place and I'm sitting on my bed is because I am extremely emotionally hungover from a Comic Con that I attended on Saturday. The Comic Con was rubbish, don't get me wrong. Um, Comic Cons in Northern Ireland, where I live, has been going downhill for a very long time, but I went anyway with my friends, it was good fun. Uh, we made the best of a bad situation and we enjoyed ourselves. You can still see the, rema the remainder of my Harley Quinn temporary tattoos on my face. I haven't been able to get them off yet and my fingernails are still painted from my Harley cosplay. So yeah, that's why everything's a bit of a mess, but I try not to miss uploading. I, I try to do it as little as I can. So here we are, counted fair and unbiased. Woo! The first thing I want to talk about is Simon and the Praetor Lupus. Praetor Lupus. That's how it's pronounced, right? Praetor? Praetor? I don't know. Who cares? You know what I'm talking about. When they said, when someone said that Simon's um, gig had been cancelled, I honestly thought it was Heidi. Actually, I was 100% convinced it was Heidi. I was sitting going, well, it's Heidi. This is obviously Heidi. Because Heidi is a replacement for a character in the books called Maureen. This has been confirmed by the show Rodder Todd Slapkin. If you remember there was a Maureen at the start of season one. I don't know if they had plans for her to become like the Maureen in the books but she, her character seemed to sort of dwindle away. So they brought Heidi in as kind of a replacement for what the Maureen in the books was. And honestly the fact that they've aged her up is a bit more comfortable for me because Maureen was quite young in the books which led to a lot of uncomfortable situations with future happenings with her and Simon. So I'm glad Heidi's older. But I was convinced that it was Heidi that had cancelled his gig and Heidi wasn't even in this episode. She didn't show up at all. So I'm happy I was able to be wrong. I was thrown completely off guard. It was Kyle who cancelled Simon's gig and he cancelled Simon's gig to protect him because the purpose of the Praetor Lupus is to protect Darmwalders, specifically outcast Darmwalders, new download Darmwalders, Darmwalders who are basically in danger. And the way that we find out that Kyle is a werewolf, well, I say the way we found out, the way Simon found out that Kyle was a werewolf was actually really interesting because Gius took an interest in what was going on in Simon's life. And that was really nice. Um, well, you, know, you don't get a lot of Jason and Simon scenes, obviously, besides them bickering or kind of having a whole awkwardness because they both fancied Clary, they both go out, went either went out or are going out with Clary. So it was nice to see a bit of camaraderie going on, especially since Jason is going through a lot right now. Um, I saw, I think it was on Instagram or Facebook, I can't remember, definitely wasn't Tumblr because I don't go on Tumblr anymore, but someone pointed out that Jace cares about Simon now because he cares about Clary and Clary cares about Simon. So Jace wants to make sure that Simon is safe to keep Clary happy, which is a good like mindset to have. It's nice to see Jace caring about people other than himself. It's, it's nice to see him finally warming up to Simon and caring about what's going on in Simon's life and making sure Simon is safe even if it is partially a means to distract himself from what's going on in his life. So the reason that we find out about Kyle is because Jace sees Wolfsbane. He figures out that the apartment is weirdly like tailored to Simon. Like everything in it is like exactly what Simon would want in an apartment. And it was re re kind of suspicious and what was it rent controlled? <laughs> And this guy just happened to stumble upon Simon. That's the that that's something that I liked because it showed that shadow hunters they're not only just physically trained, they are trained to kind of think, like sort of put things together and connect dots, like the way a detective would. It was nice to see that as well. It was nice to see Jace doing it in particular because with Jace it's it's usually all brawn and no brains. 
the way he's presented. So it was nice to see him thinking and putting things together and he was able to solve the the mystery of who Kyle was. And once he found out that he was that he was from the Praetor Lupus, he was completely fine. He was like, oh okay, because he understood that Kyle wasn't going to hurt Simon, that's not what the Praetor does. But Simon obviously still felt betrayed. Um, but it's nice to see that Simon and Kyle are going to get along and Simon is going to stay with him because obviously Simon still is a danger to a lot of people and a danger to himself. So it's nice to see that someone's actually going to protect him. Something else that I really loved in this episode was the character who came to Alec and thanked him for inspiring him with the fact that he came out. I cannot remember the character's name, but I do know he's going to be a reoccurring character. I'm pretty sure that's been confirmed on Twitter. So this character is going to be a recurring character. So for some reason pe that's got in people's head that Alec is going to cheat with this character on Magnus and because of the conflict that's going on and I'm just not going to deign that stupidity with a response. But this character came to Alec basically to inform him of something and Alec was like, okay, ground and then he stayed and he was like, what, what are you still here for? And basically the guy thanked him for being so brave as to come out because he paved the way for other shadow hunters like him who are gay who could also come out. There was a scene similar to this in the books, but it was very quick. It was basically like this Aileen, Aileen. It was Aileen who comes up to him in the books and goes like, oh, thank you, I'm gay too. And we're so happy that, that you came out. And then, you know, it was pretty quick and he was just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was nice to actually have a nice moment to sort of... It wasn't exactly slow, but it took its time, it took its pace, and it gave us time to enjoy it and appreciate it, because it's kind of like it's kind of like life imitating art, because not only has Alec it paved the way for gay shadow hunters in the show, but Magnus and Alec's relationship on shadow hunters in general has paved the way for a lot of gay representation on TV in general. So it was great seeing that and it was a really it was a really interesting moment of life imitating art as I said. And it's nice to see that Alec coming out did have an impact on people. Like it wasn't just like all the shadow hunters aren't just looking at him now as like the like ew, he's gay. There's actually some people who actually appreciate what he did and they look up to him and they find him inspiring and I don't know, it just made me really happy. I'm really glad that that was acknowledged. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing more of that character. I want to see what what he brings and why he's going to be a reoccurring character. I hope he's not going to be a reoccurring character in the sense of Raj or Ollie because that would just be annoying. But I can't appreciate the fact that Ollie was not in this episode. So thank you for that, Shadowhunters. <laughs> so Clary uh, is able to summon Euthuriel. That's how, is that how it's pronounced? Euthuriel? Um, it was great seeing her and Luke together because it feels like it's been forever. I know they had a moment in episode one, but it wasn't really... Mm. It was nice to see that Clary was able to confide in Luke on the fact that she used a wish from... She compelled the wish from the angel to raise Jace from the dead. It was nice to see that she trusted Luke with that. Even if it's not shown enough that Clary trusts Luke, it was nice to have this moment that... To prove that she does. She would rather tell him over anyone else first because she knows that he would... He wouldn't like report her or have her thrown in the guard or anything. That was nice. I miss these Clary and Luke like father daughter moments because there's not enough of them. But yes, they go to Cleophis and she, because she's an Iron Sister and she knows how to like talk to the angels, but they are like, but they're not answering her. But she figures, oh Clary, you're special. <laughs> you're Mary Sue Frey. You can you can summon the angel. So she summons the angel and. I don't like the design for the angels in the show. I have to be honest about that. I think it looks very cheap and I'm not a fan of it. Euthurial, it doesn't... Portraying angels on TV is hard in a visual medium because obviously angels are supposed to be like, oh, like, you know, overwhelmingly beautiful. But I like the way that Raziel was done. Like, it wasn't exactly that you could see him, but he was still, you know, there, if that makes sense. But no, I'm not a fan of Euthurial's design. I wasn't a fan of him last week. Last series when you saw him it, when Clary was poisoned by Lake Lynn and stuff like that. I wasn't a fan. But anyway, he just about gets to tell us what, um, what about, tell Clary about Lilith. And he is killed by Lilith. And he is killed by Lilith very easily 
For an angel, he died very, very easily. That was the first thing in my head. Like, it was very extravagant, but... I don't know whether they were going for the fact that, oh, Lilith, she's the mother of all demons. She can kill an angel, but she did it at a very... It was very easy, that's all I'm gonna say. I just thought, wow, that was... <laughs> that was fucking easy. <laughs> But at least now Clary knows that the oil is not the major threat. Clary now knows that there's someone behind the oil, kind of like a puppet, puppet master controlling him. Or it, or as far as she knows it, anyway. But because Lilith was able to kill Ethereal, she manages to get a sliver of Clary's soul. And it goes into Jace's drink, and well, you know the rest. Fuck. <laughs> this was another episode where it ended, and I was just like, fuck. <laughs> I've never been more invested in Clace than I have been in this season. I think they've done a brilliant job of developing Clace this season and developing Jace in particular because I never find myself caring all that much about him until this season. It's amazing. I'm, I'm really happy with the direction Jace's character has gone and he's gone through a tremendous amount of character development and Clary isn't even annoy that annoying this season, although she hasn't played that much of an integral part. All of the stuff that she seems to be doing seems to be coincidental, you know, like, oh, you can summon the angels because your blood is the Ethereal's blood. Like, oh, you were able to defeat that angel because you know how to invent runes. So I hope she plays more of an integral part in the final half of the season. But I'm, as long as she's not being annoying or too majorly Mary Sue, I can completely accept her not, like, <laughs> the way she is right now. So that's it for this week, Shadowhunters, Angels, and Dime is Like. I'll see you in two days' time for episode six. I am not sure what it's called. It's something to do with windows. <laughs> something to do All I know is that there's something to do with windows, Malak are fighting, and it's just a whole shit show going on right now. So <laughs> I'll see you then, Shadowhunters, Angels, and Dime is Like. And remember, even though it's easy, apparently, to kill an angel, don't do it. Just that, don't kill angels. Don't ki kill angels a PSA from me. <laughs> okay, see you soon.